What's up boys, back out here. So this video was going to be brakes, alternator, and some more tuning, maybe even some road tuning. But the alternator in good old Ian fashion has been delayed three times. No one knows where it's at. So this video is going to be brakes, some interior bits, and I uh, figured out how to delete that uh, clutch neutral safety switch doohickey. So you want to start at this driver's side rear. Okay, last time I did a video when I was bleeding brakes, I started on that one and I had a couple people call me an idiot and say you're supposed to start on the farthest one. That's true. I'm going to show you why this one, the driver's side rear, is actually the farthest one away from the reservoir. So most cars have the brake lines come straight down from the reservoir and come down this side. And that would make that one the farthest, the passenger side rear. But not on this car, okay? They probably just left it for the JDM cars and they ran the brake lines across in the engine bay. So the brake lines come down from the driver's side on the reservoir, come over here in this bus bar. You see the brake lines? They come down, over, and then there's the brake line that goes to the passenger side. And then the driver's side comes up and over and comes over to this. So the driver's side rear is the one you want to start on. That is the farthest from the brake reservoir. Start on this one, then this one, then this one, the passenger front, then the driver front. That's how it goes on a 3000 GT and a Dodge Stealth. And a couple other uh, Japanese cars do that because they just left the lines on the passenger side, which would normally be the driver's side. And instead of moving them over, they just ran lines over to the brake reservoir. Now, while you're doing this, make sure your reservoir stays full. You can always suck it back out of your reservoir. But if your reservoir goes empty, you gotta start all over because you have air in your lines. I hate using this thing. I feel like it always causes more problems than just having someone here pumping the brakes with you. Now, it does come with those little nipples, but they always end up leaking. Get this on your nipple. Yes, my gauge, the uh, plastic on is broke, but it still works. Create vacuum. Get up to like 20 PSI. And go get one of these anywhere. They're cheap. Then bust this loose. You see all these air bubbles coming out? You want to get all this air out. Each one go all the way around, then come back to this one. The problem is you got to make sure you're not leaking air out the side of your hose either. Okay, I just remembered because I've been sitting here bleeding this for like 15 minutes. And I'm still getting bubbles. Throw some grease around this fitting. It'll help seal this hose. And then stop it from leaking air. Is the idea. Alright boys, bled the brakes. I don't really have much else to do until I get the alternator because I wanted to drive and tune this thing. I can do interior. I had the windows sitting open forever. The whole thing needs wiped down. Just covered in dust everywhere. I got all these bins just sitting back here. Everything's just filthy. Just get everything out of here. Start cleaning it all up. Putting the interior back together. I got pieces everywhere. I might try to find a new one of these. I need to just get a sandblaster. Like a cabinet. Yeah, dude, this is done. I need a new one of these. I'm just gonna take everything back out, sweep all this whole interior. It doesn't take long to gut this thing. I can't make up my mind how far I want to go. Do I want to freaking rip this whole interior out again? If you guys haven't been here for a long time, when I first got this car, I completely gutted it and washed everything out. And now with me being in an habit so much, it almost needs me to take all the carpet back out again. I took all this out and I pressure washed this carpet. Everything was spotless at one time. Now it's ruined. Can't have anything nice around here. Dude, this whole interior needs just wiped it down at least. There's so much dust on everything. And I should take this out to put those new bushings in. I got bushings for this mount. Some screws in there, wonder where those go. You know when you take stuff apart, you have like this idea of like, okay, I'm gonna put those screws in there, those screws in there, but then when a year goes by because the engine builder completely screws you over, you don't remember what screws went where. And I gotta get new trim because this broke. Might be able to take these out and super glue them back on that trim piece. 
Let me get these all out and see how bad it actually is. I don't think super glue is gonna work, but I could try to plastic weld these. I need more. I'm actually like, don't even have enough pieces. I only got two plastic weld on. I'm missing one, two, three, four, five. I'm missing three of these. I definitely want the bottom one, this one, and the top. I need to find at least one more piece of plastic. The kid that had this car before me put that cheap pod in there, so I'm sure that it's gone forever. There's plastic pieces. Yeah, they're not gonna be in here. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to fix this. I'm gonna say I have to see if Adrian's got a whole eight pillar laying around. This one definitely goes there, it matches up perfect. I can plastic weld that and fix that one. 1000%. This one came from here and plastic weld and fix that one. But then I still don't have the end on either side. You'd want the end over anything, really. Yeah, because I can definitely plastic weld these. If you guys were here, I plastic weld a huge hole in that bumper. I got pretty good at it. Not trying to brag or anything about it, just there's a little learning curve. Probably make these a hundred times stronger than they were with some zip ties. You like melt zip ties into it, add a lot more plastic than what was there before. I just need to find at least one more. If I can find one more piece of plastic. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call Adrian. I guess that's we're gonna something else for now. Okay, yeah, let's start putting this side bed together. This little banana piece is going to go up in there. And then there's a whole panel that bolts in under there. And that bolts to that. So this little box right here, don't know what it is. Screws in right there. And then this panel gets screwed in. Now let's clean this off real quick. I don't wanna be that guy. We can at least wipe this down. Okay, once you get that back on there, this whole thing goes up in there like this. All right, I'm gonna go around and put these screws in. There's three, and then that clip in the back. Now your banana piece got to go on first. Then your door card goes on. Okay, bananas in. Kick plate. Let's wipe this down. There's cobwebs on it. That's how long it's been. I'm not gonna put the ECU away right now. You guys know as soon as I do that, for some reason I don't have to get to it. So I'm just gonna leave it sit there for now and leave that side panel off. I'll end up figuring out what I wanna do with it later. I do wanna figure out this neutral safety switch or this clutch switch. Like sometimes it picks up, sometimes it doesn't. It's gonna be hard for me to show you on camera. There's like two of them I think on this car. Like you got a, like you see that white plug right there? There's a plunger on top of it. So when you push this clutch in, and it just barely touches it, and you can see it's adjustable. I'm gonna adjust it so it clicks on faster. I was just gonna disconnect those wires and hook them together, and that should tell it to turn on. But then there's this switch right here that does the opposite. I don't know if you guys can see right there. It like notices when the clutch is not touching it. Yeah. All my other cars have never had like a clutch safety switch. Like the FD, the GTR, I mean, it's endless. I don't think any of my cars had the safety switch. They would always start with no, without having to push the clutch in. This is, I think, the only manual car I've ever had where I had to push the clutch in to have it turn on. Okay, I ended up getting the whole thing out of there. This is the piece that's up top measures when the clutch is all the way to the floor it was like barely screwed in there that's why like when that arm would come down it would just barely touch it like it would only go down like that far i did screw it up to where like it was touching it like three quarters of the way in then it was almost like maybe it wouldn't let me push the clutch all the way in because that would stop the clutch from going in if that was screwed up any higher so i just disconnected it i think i'm gonna cut these wires twist them together and see if it'll let me crank the car all right, that's still just hanging down there. Let's turn this key. If I push this in, will it start? Okay, it's just this. So if I push that in and I turn the key, it cranks like if the clutch is pushed in. So let me uh, cut those wires, spin them together and see if it'll crank. If not, I can only solder them back together. I'm gonna cut them to where I got enough length to put it back together if I have to. Cause I was even looking on the forms like a year ago when I was having a problem with this car, not wanting to start every now and then because the clutch safety switch wasn't working all the time. 
that uh, I looked it up and like everyone was like, I, I don't know, don't do that. You should always have a clutch safety switch. I'm not like, most of my cars haven't had one, so I'm disconnecting this one. Okay, I found out why it was only working sometimes, because this wire is so corroded, it just fell off from me barely touching it. There's like two wires that were connected. The rest is just green, eaten to nothing. So, regardless, I had to replace this or just run these together. That's crazy how that fell off just from me like barely touching it. That's why this thing wasn't working 90% of the time. Let me cut it with enough so I can see the blue. So I know blue goes to that side. Now, if I'm right, I should just be able to twist these together. Let me strip these, twist them together, see if the car cranks. That switch right there must be for the ECU or something. I don't know if you guys can even see it. There is like another clutch switch there. It just notices like if the clutch is compressed at all. Like all you do is barely move it and that switch is on. So that must go to the ECU. This plunger one must be the safety switch. I don't know what that would go to the ECU for, but yeah, man, these things are so corroded. I'm gonna have to keep going back. Just get all this green off. Maybe this car is gonna flood. Cause I mean, I do have some rust up on some of these panels. Now I just made them really big. I'll clean them up and I'll probably even get a solder gun down in there. I just did like nice big three loops. Cause if I want to undo it, I don't want to have to restrip it. Let's see if this thing cranks. I'm gonna be so excited. This neutral safety switch, I keep calling it neutral safety switch, even though that's for like an automatic transmission. Clutch switch, whatever you want to call it, has been driving me nuts. Nope, it does not work. What is in that thing? So what is so special about this that it only works when this is actually connected and pushed in? I figured it was just connecting these two wires together. Obviously not. This has to be like some sort of, I can't think of it now. What are those little like round things that end up leaking all the time? One of those little like battery things that are inside of like a circuit board. There must be one of those in here. Okay, none of this is making any sense to me. I just took it apart. That's all it is. It was these springs, this wire. This is making no sense to me. All this was was in there like that. With this on there, it was kind of spring loaded. So once it blew apart, it's never going back together. But look, all it does is touch these two wires together. So why won't it work now? There's no capacitor. That's what I was looking for earlier when I was talking. I thought there was gonna be like a little capacitor in here. I was just gonna solder in to the wires, but there wasn't. So now that they're connected, it should work. All I did last time was plunge that thing and it cranked. How much sense does that make? You know, I was just looking at it. It might actually have to be disconnected to work. It might always be connected. And then once it's disconnected, it knows the clutch is pushed in. Maybe all I had to do is cut these. Maybe that's how stupid I really am. All right, let me untangle these. Okay, let's see if that's it. Yeah, what a dummy. Okay, Jesus Christ, man. I've lost my mind. Ever since I had the cooties, talk about brain farts. I mean, how would I have known that though? I just put it back together and I realized that they're always connected until you press the clutch in and then it disconnects. So all you gotta do is cut those wires. I didn't even have to take that out or nothing. I could just cut the wires and been good. So if somebody wants to go in the forms and say that, that you can just cut, cut the blue and black wire to the neutral safety switch on top of the clutch, probably help a bunch of people out. Cause I cut them and then I put them together. You guys seen the whole thing. That's stupid. I wanted a thought inside my, you know what I mean? I, I bet you none of you guys even knew that either. These are actually always connected like that. And then once you press that button, it separates them. So there we go. Neutral safety switch is done. Brakes are done. I think I'm gonna end the video here because I want to clean all that carpet and everything before I put it back in the trunk. I don't want to cover up the ECU. I'm really just walking around trying to find stuff to do until I get the alternator because I don't want to drive this thing without making sure I got enough power going to the injectors and stuff. And it's supposed to be nice next week, so I might be able to take this out on the road and do some street tuning. I'm so excited that I don't have to have that stupid ass clutch pressed in anymore to start the car. That's awesome. I hated that. I, I know to make sure it's not in gear. So I don't need all the safety switches and everything. All right, boys, I will uh, see you next one. Don't uh, forget to hit that like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hopefully the alternator shows up here real soon. No, my luck, it'll probably get delayed again. See ya.